Hi there and welcome to the third video in this series where we build a NASA image command line application using Python. In this video we're going to extend what we had in the last example and we're going to give users the ability to fetch images between a start date and an end date. If you go to the NASA API which will be linked in the description here, the astronomy picture of the day API has this section that details the query parameters you can attach. And we've got the date parameter um, already, so we've got that one. But what we now want to do is give users the chance to fetch a range of dates. And that's a start date parameter and an end date parameter, which defaults to the current date, as you can see here. So we're now going to amend our code and give users the ability to attach a start and an end date. So if we cross to Visual Studio Code, we're going to add the start and end to our command as parameters and they're going to be typer options. So how do we attach an option? Well, we can say start, and that's going to be a date time argument, and it's going to default to typer.option and none. So it will be, by default, it will be none, and very similarly for the end uh, argument here, it will be a, an optional argument of type date time, which is de by default none. So now that we have the arguments, what I'm going to do is we're going to amend how we construct this URL at the moment. And I'm going to create a helper function and just paste some code in here, which should do the job for us. And I need to import a few things as well at the top. Now let's walk through this code. What it's going to take in is the date, which is of course the first parameter to our fetch image command. But it's also going to take in these start and end date parameters here, start and end. And based on what these values are, it's going to determine a dictionary, which is going to be attached to the URL as a query parameter. Now, this comes from requests, the Python requests library, which allows you to pass parameters in URLs, which is done like this. You, you attach a params object to your requests.get method as a keyword argument, and that attaches a dictionary of key value pairs that um, are query parameters for the URL. That's exactly what we're going to do now. We're going to return a dictionary with the query parameters that we need. So if the start date is defined, we'll create a dictionary with that start date parameter that NASA expects here. And the end date, remember, is optional. Um, so it will default, on NASA, it will default to the current day. But if it is defined, we'll also attach that as a key in the dictionary as well. Otherwise, if the start is not defined, we're just going to return the date um, which we were using in the last video by default. So this will return a dictionary, which we can then use in our function. So let's change our function a bit to use this new, um, this new helper command that we've got. So let's import our new helper function here. Um, so from helpers, we'll import the URL query parameters. And what we're going to do is we're going to call that URL query parameters here. We're going to change the way this is done uh, here. So we're expecting query parameters back from this function. So we'll call URL query params and we pass in our date, our start and our end. So some of these might be none. Um, so we're going to determine what to actually attach from that function. That will return a dictionary of query parameters. We can get rid of this line here and we will do a request.get to the API URL and we'll attach the params to um, that request.get call as the params keyword. And that will attach the query parameters based on the dictionary that's returned from this function. So that should take care of the first step here. So what I'm now going to do is I'm actually going to create a couple of more helpers here. Um, because I think this function here, this command function is too long. We want to make it a bit more concise by extracting some code into functions. Firstly, I'm going to extract the code that actually gets the URL for the image and then creates a pillow image object from that. So within helpers, let's paste a new function here. Again, we need to do a few imports as well. So from pill, we'll import image and we need to import requests. And finally, from IO, we will import bytes IO. Now that we have that, we have a function here called get image that takes in the image's URL and it will return a pillow image object. It makes the request to that URL and then it will convert it to a pillow image with this line of code here and return that image. So what we now want to do is import that in our main.py. So from helpers, we import that function. And finally, we are going to, down here where we are getting an image object, we're just going to make this equal to the result of that call. And we can get rid of this line here. And finally, what I want to do is move this code here, which saves the image to the file system. I want to move that into a function as well. So we'll copy that. And within the helpers file, we'll define a new function called save image to file system. 
and that is going to take in the image that we get from the, U the API URL and it's also going to take in the title of the image that we extract from the JSON and then we can paste in the code that we had here. We do one more import here at the top from our config. We will import the image directory and we also need to import OS as well actually so import the OS module so we can make this directory if it doesn't exist. So we've extracted this function now save image to file system. Within our main code we need to import that uh, from our helper module and finally we'll remove this code here from our command and we'll call the function passing in our image that we get back and we'll also pass in the title remember we're extracting the title from the initial JSON response and that's used to save the image with a particular name in the image directory. So now what we can do is we can try running this but we're actually going to get a problem here and the problem is that when you fetch a range of images from NASA between a start and an end date actually the response you get is not a dictionary as we got before with a single image it's actually a list of dictionaries instead and if it's a list of dictionaries we can't use this syntax here where we're accessing a dictionary key because we now have a list instead if it's a start and an end date so what I'm going to do just to be uh, just to make this a bit simpler is I'm going to coerce the dictionary if we get a single dictionary response with one image I'm actually going to create a single element list um, out of that so that we can access everything as if it was a list. So one simple line to do that. If the data that we get back here is a dictionary, we're going to convert it to a single element list. This is not the most elegant code in the world, but it will do the job. And then what we can do then is we can loop over that data there. So for response and data, I can move all of this code here down into the loop. And finally, we can also save and close the image as well within that loop. And we need to change the data parameter to the response because now we're looping over a list of dictionaries. Each one of them um, in the iteration has this variable, response. Um, and that should hopefully do the trick. We are now guaranteed to have a list of dictionaries, even if it's a single dictionary within the list. So we can therefore loop over that and know that each element within that is indeed a dictionary that we can use indexing syntax. So if we now test that command in the terminal, and if we call main.py, there's only one command in this, so we don't need to specify its name. What we're going to do is we're going to call start, and let's set this to the 20th of November. And if we specify start, we should now see that we get all images from the 20th of November up to the current day. So be careful if you're running this in the future, because it might fetch a lot of images, but it's basically going to fetch an image from every day from the current day up till the end date, which will by default be today. So let's execute that. And you see it sends an API request. Now it's fetching the image, which is showing up here. And we get two images, there's a third image, and it's gonna bring up all of the images from the last five days based on the time of recording. So we get all of these images and we can still specify the, the save flag as well. We can save it to our local images folder here um, so you should see more images appearing in this folder here as they turn up on the screen so very flexible we can now fetch images we can save them now I want to show you that we can also use the end date parameter as well so if I specify the start date let's I'm just going to copy a command so if I run main.py and we say the start date should be the 20th of December 2020 the end date should be the 25th of December 2020 that should now get five images between those two dates. So we get the images from last year around Christmas time. And you can see them all coming up here. You can see them saving to this images directory. So we can now get images between any given two dates, as long as those images are um, available in the NASA API. So that's all for this video, really. I think there's been a bit of code in this video. It's worth going through this yourself to see what's going on and to see how to achieve these things using NASA's API, but using the typer module as well. So thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.